everyone, this is Eugene Morris from TheBrotherhoodOfGaming.com. And before I get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to a brand new game that's available on Steam called Pop-Up Dungeon. It's a brand new tabletop turn-based adventure with a lot of gameplay options and RPG elements. Not to mention it has a great voice cast featuring heavy hitters like John DeLancey, Ahmed Best, and William Morris. Yeah, you heard that right, my cousin Will is in the game and he voices several characters. So if you have a Steam account, this game is right up your alley and I say give it a try. Now that that's out of the way, here's a review of Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon 2. Many years ago when it was announced that Koji Igarashi, the man behind the legendary Castlevania Symphony of the Night, was leaving Konami to make his own spiritual successor called Bloodstained, a stretch goal on the Kickstarter campaign was reached. This gave us the 8-bit title Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. It was a fun little homage to the classic Castlevania games from the past. Well, it looks like it's sold well enough because boom, here's a sequel. Now, the Curse of the Moon games seem to be their own thing, separate from the larger title, Ritual of the Night. Meaning, while they have the same characters, they seem to have no direct connection in the events of those games. I guess you can call them an alternate take on the Bloodstained Saga. Either that or I'm just looking too deep into this. As an 8-bit style game, the story is simple and straightforward. You play demon hunters, and you journey to destroy the big bad and his cronies. The main character is again Zangetsu, the sword-willing badass who doesn't play well with others. His companions this time are Dominique from Ritual of the Night, Robert, his old friend from the past, and Hihachi, a cute little corgi that knows alchemy and pilots a mech, because Japan. The story is about as deep as the classic Castlevania game, but since those are the games it's emulating, it makes perfect sense. There is, however, a nice little dose of humor splashed in to go with the macabre surroundings, which does give this game a little extra charm. Just like the first game, Curse of the Moon 2 is very familiar to the classic Castlevania games from the NES, for better or for worse. Once your allies join up, you gain the ability to switch out between them on the fly. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. Sengetsu has a sword and is the most well-rounded, while Dominic has a spear and the highest jump. Robert wields a gun, which makes him great for long-range attacks, but he has limited health, while Hayachi is the strongest and can float in mid-air for a time. Throughout the game, you can get access to hearts for increased health, sub-weapons, and the magic to use them. The key to victory is switching out between the characters and to use them at the appropriate times, as their abilities will make certain sections easier to traverse. If one of them dies, you may hit a brick wall and may have to wait until the entire cast is wiped out and start again from the last checkpoint. These levels are long, and you need to keep an eye on your character's health. Fortunately, by getting enough points, you can earn 1-ups, and you'll need every one of them, because this game is hard. I mean hard. Even more so than the first one. Complete with a classic knockback. Hey, it's all part of the fun. Often when you get to the game's great stage bosses, you are just beat to hell. The game also requires multiple runs in order to fully complete the game's story, so there is replayability here, if you're willing to brave the game on multiple runs. Which I admit may be very exhausting for some. You may feel like, hey, once is enough. You can also bring a friend for local co-op. You know the old saying, misery loves company. For me, this was the game's real highlight. I'm a straight up sucker for old 8-bit classic tracks, and this game has abundance of them. With rich, digitized scores, this game's music is a real treat for the ears for old fogies like myself. Big thumbs up. The graphics are bright and colorful despite the dark atmosphere that they're in. The character sprites also have some fine details, so much so that you'll have to keep in mind that this is not a straight up 8-bit title like the old games when it comes to graphics, as they are a bit more advanced. You definitely see that in the outstanding bosses. Still, they just look amazing. They are bursting at the seams with color and personality. A real remarkable achievement. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game a buy, or is it a pass? You have kick-ass characters with tight yet very difficult gameplay. Outstanding retro-inspired music, rich graphics that are both dark and colorful. You do not have to be as old as me to enjoy this kind of game, as even the young can find enjoyment here. Just be warned, this game will step on your face and look at you, so be ready for a good challenge. My wife got a real kick out of watching me bite the dust several times in this game. But getting past a hard section, in its own way, is very, very satisfying. And then you get ready for the next challenge. It's hard to explain, but the retro fans out there know what I'm talking about. Now, I must admit, this game kind of came out of nowhere for me. I heard about the sequel after I purchased the Castlevania Collection on my Xbox One, 
so I was definitely in the mood for more of this genre. If you're an old Castlevania fan, this definitely hits the sweet spot. Here's hoping for a third entry to the Curse of the Moon series. Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You've been watching the Brotherhood of Gaming.com show. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and like the video, and as always, keep on gaming.